This week on Supercars Talk, Formula One makes the Supercars rulebook look plain and simple. Well, the end of that Formula One race. <laughs> Do we really want to get into that here? Uh, we got backseat drivers to talk about that on Thursday night. Um, that's our live stream where we talk about generally open wheeler racing. Um, but yeah, basically any other motorsport other than supercars on there. So check that out on the separate channel. I'll probably put the link down in the description uh, where we talk about the um, shit show essentially that was the formula one race uh, especially towards the end there um but yeah supercars had their own storylines over the weekend uh we ended up having a rolling start on sunday because cars were on fire um yeah the nick Percat thing happened there on friday didn't think too much of it you you know, one one event and you kind of go, oh yeah, these things kind of happen. Um, but then when James Courtney's car went up in flames, very similarly, you kind of go, ooh, maybe there's something going on here. Um, they think it's uh, down to overheating with a breather or something on a catch can within the Mustang engine bay. Um, I'm not going to pretend I know exactly what's going on or have any inside knowledge or really have all a heap of mechanical knowledge, but it didn't seem to happen on Sunday when we had that rolling start. I can see why they did have a single file rolling start. Uh, well, I was disappointed that they didn't have, you know, a side-by-side -side rolling start, like a proper rolling start. Uh, this was, they had the first lap under safety car and then they went off single file. Um, probably something in the rules saying that they can't just go and do a rolling start. Uh, but once again, it would have been nice. Well, not nice. I mean, it would have been spectacular to see a two by two rolling start going as the first turn. And actually a bit of a battle to already only 13 lap race and then have a lap taken away because it was started under safety car. It just it felt like we got a little bit shortchanged. Um, I was there on Thursday, Friday. Uh, Thursday, obviously the race all got on, no problem. Good, happy days. Didn't have to worry about Formula One or anything on the Thursday though. Uh, on the Friday, we were all there. I was there with a group of people. Uh, we were all excited that the supercars were out there and it really it felt disappointing watching the race because they kind of got started, safety car, got going again, Jack LeBrock hit the wall, safety car, called it um, time certain finish. Uh, yeah, it felt like we'd kind of, because we'd, we'd seen the Formula One practice, there was no qualifying on the Friday, we'd seen the Formula One practice and that, uh, we'd seen F2 and F3 practice. We'd been waiting for the race. That was the race that we've been waiting for all day and then that kind of happened. Just felt like we got shortchanged a little bit. Um, probably a little bit different watching at home and that but yeah it just just felt that a little bit disappointing and then the rolling start on the sunday just felt like uh yeah once again just a little bit missing from it um the the pits and that felt kind of similar but it was a little bit taken away the the trucks were moved um away from the actual supercars paddock they had oh, probably a 10 minute walk to the trucks uh, as you worked your way around to them. Um, it just didn't quite feel the same having the kind of the paddock there. Um, all the teams were there, but you didn't have all the trucks and the merchandise and everything like what they've had the last um, few, few events there since the bits have been there. There is some talk that uh, obviously this was the last year of the contract with supercars and with F2 and F3 being there, it's looking like they might actually be taking over the supercars pit area area. Um, it's looking like there will be upgrades to the Formula 1 pits and there will be a bit more of a permanent structure being put in there for F2 and F3. What that means for supercars moving forward, um, they obviously want to be at the event for the sponsors and that, but playing kind of, yeah, third, maybe fourth fiddle with F2 and F3 there. Uh, yeah, is it the place we really need to be? The other little question that I had coming out of this weekend, um, I didn't really see the super soft tire lights in the windscreen that we used to have. Um, it was relatively easy when the cars were driving past you in the pit lane when you were there in person to see the, you know, different colored sidewall colors. 
On the TV, I found it very hard to tell which cars were on the, the super soft tire as opposed to the hard tire. Um, and you, you obviously saw the pace differential on them and you know, they only did one lap on the hards, which once again, the issues. Um, but <laughs> let's not get into the, you know, this, the races being long enough that the super softs lasted the whole way through. Um, but yeah, I, I quite used to like that visual aid there where you had that light in the windscreen telling you that someone was on the softer of the two tires. So you understood when someone was, you know, especially off the start where they make up quite a few positions, you're like, oh, okay, that guy's on softs, that guy's on hards. Okay, that kind of makes sense. Whereas it was very hard to tell this weekend. I'm not sure if I'm just totally missing something, but um, I didn't see it there over the weekend. Now we'll run a little bit of a recap of everyone's weekend, uh, starting off with the lowest in the team's championship, which of, of course is the Blanchard Racing Team with their one car. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's hard for them to move up the field with only one car. Um, Hazelwood finally cracked the top 10, finishing ninth in the final race. Um, the big issue for them though was they got disqualified from all of Thursday running for running the wrong drop gear in the transaxle. Uh, so they got kicked out of the two qualifying sessions, which meant that they had to start last um, for the second race of the weekend, plus they were also kicked out of uh, race one. They got disqualified from that. Uh, yeah, so that, that made it a difficult weekend for them. Next up, um, Matt Stone Racing, hard to believe where Jack LeBrock's in the top 10 of the championship and these guys are that far down the order. They are in front of the second of the Brad Jones and the Tickford teams, but I have, you know, barreled all them in together for this. Um, LeBrock, continually finishing in the top 10 other than he had that um the car fail that put him in the wall on the friday afternoon that um, ultimately caused the race to uh, be stopped earlier um but every other time he was in the top 10 he's doing really well um yeah he's in the top 10 of the championship um highlight of the weekend for him was fifth in the sunday race um qualifying he's been doing a really good job uh yeah i i, I can't say enough um i Obviously, I, you know, I got to hang out in the Matt Stone pits on the Thursday, so you know, I have a bit of a soft spot for them. But it is great to see them moving forward and doing great things this year. Um, Hill wasn't right at the back. Um, I wouldn't call him midfield, but he wasn't right at the back. Uh, yeah, he, he's making progress. You know. It, the, this, this will take time. Um, next up, Dick Johnson Racing. They haven't really moved forward. Um, Davison did look like he was going to have a podium and then got done for an unsafe release. Anton did get to start from pole on the, uh, the, the first race of the weekend. They did show a lot of pace early on in the weekend. They seemed to go a bit backwards during the weekend. At least they did show some pace this weekend, unlike Newcastle, where they were just nowhere all weekend. Um, Premier Racing, Slady hit the wall hard on Thursday, which meant he had to sit out both qualifying sessions. Um, yeah, I did just very, very anonymous weekend for both of them, other than Golding uh, giving Fossey a bit of a nudge there into the wall. Um, yeah, they were, hardly knew that either of them were there all weekend. Uh, Tickford, Courtney decided to have a barbecue to celebrate uh, his newfound speed over the weekend. Um, it was kind of like the Courtney of old, getting in those battles at the front of the field. Um, most of the time he was the fastest of the four cars, which yeah, Waters just kind of went missing. He did have two top tens um, over the weekend, but yeah, not not what you'd, you'd expect Waters to be in the top 10 or four races, really good qualifying. He just wasn't there really. Um, Randall was mid pack most of the races, yeah, it's not spectacular, but not disappointing, I suppose. He was just mid-pack. Um, and Fraser had a best finish of 13th. Um, other than that, he was generally at the back of the field. Uh, team 18, Frosty at least got himself, you know, kind of involved in stuff. Um, he got involved in, you know, pit lane penalties and things like that. Um, he took Golding out of race three. Uh, yeah, he was up the front, down the back. He was everywhere. He was in crashes and stuff. Um, at least we saw him though. Pi was there. Grove Racing. Um, 
Dave Reynolds, somehow he's still in the top 10 of the championship after this round. Um, I reckon he must have been playing with a black cat while walking under a ladder and smashing some mirrors. Uh, yeah, he just did not go well for him. Um, Matt Payne, on the other hand, uh, yeah, I expected him to just be tearing up equipment left, right and centre this year. And um, yeah, unspectacular, but he's just been finishing races. He hasn't really got himself involved in incidents. He's just been ticking along quite smartly. Um, yeah, the, the total opposite of what I was expecting from him. Um, WAU, so bad for Percat, he just decided to torch the whole car. Uh, yeah, I... I just, when I saw that happen, I just thought, well, yeah, it's, it's just the way it's going for Percat at um, Walkshire Andretti at the moment. Um, Chaz was somewhere near the front all weekend. Um, he had a really, really solid start in race four. It was looking like he was on for the win, but blew the tires off it. That was probably the only race where he really, really was looking good. Um, he was kind of at the front in the other races. Did they go a little bit too far with the setup to try and get some more pace out of it and then blew the tires off it? Um, he's still sitting second in the championship though, 32 points off the lead. It was just a, a, a very solid kind of weekend. He was j just off the podium in the three races and then he was kind of 14th or 15th, something like that in the last race. Um, but I suspect that was them having a crack, trying to, you know, make it onto the podium, get that win and probably just pushing the envelope a little bit too far, doing a bit of learning with the new car. Third in the team's championship is Brad Jones Racing. Um, forward. Where did that come from? Uh, just all weekend he had pace, a couple of pit lane penalties, uh, which scuppered his, you know, getting podiums and stuff, but at least he's really showing that promise that we, you know, that super two pace that we all expected him to bring into the main game. He's finally found it. Um, I. I'd love to see him continue with it. Uh, Jaime is right up there in the championship. He is fourth in the in the championship. Um, forward is 10th, which is how they've essentially got their third place in the championship at the moment. Um, yeah, forward in that third race, uh, he just, you know, he was pretty solid there in second position. And then he just, as Chaz was blowing off his tires, he drove up to him, overtook him, had the lead for a bit. Um, of course, then, you know, had another unsafe release. He, I heard a really good interview with him afterwards where he did say, well, you know, every we're, we're boxed into these strategies with the way the tires are. Everyone's pitting at the same time. If they pause and think about, you know, will this be an unsafe release or not? half the field drives past. So you got to kind of make that call and go for it. Uh, it was a really mature response from him considering what he just lost. He didn't throw the team under the bus or anything. Um, but yeah, just he, uh, the, the, there's pace there, which is really good to see. Um, it was a little bit disappointing. It didn't really come to a heap for them. Um, Jaime did get a podium there in the final race. Um, Jones had two top tens over the weekend, you know, um, that, that's really good. Normally they're right at the back. Um, and Smith wasn't last. Uh, it, you'd, you wouldn't quite call him mid-pack, but he definitely wasn't last all weekend. Second in the Chiefs, Chiefs Championship, no surprises here. Uh, Triple Eight, they're just making their way back to the front after their disqualifications. Um, Shane Van Gisbergen was up the front all weekend. Three podiums over the four races, one of them being a win and the worst result, a fourth over the weekend. Feeney was a bit more up and down, but he did have that pole and the race win in the Sunday race. Um, Shane, though, a uh, very uncharacteristic, massive speed in on Thursday. I'd gone off to grab some food at that point and was watch, eating away, watching trackside, didn't have a big screen. All I could hear was the announcer saying that Shane had had a big spin and it was spectacular and that. Got back to the pits and all the guys were talking about it. I'm like, what? Well, I had to wait to see the replay. Could not believe it. Um, considering how lightly he seemed to touch the wall, that was a lot of damage to the car. Um, 
yeah, but obviously they picked up and off he went and did Shane Van Gisbergen and things. And uh, yeah, now he's uh, third in the championship overall. But that leads us to the men of the hour, um, Erebus, leading the team's championship. Brody got his first win, backed it up straight away. Um, he did win that shortened race on the Friday, uh, then backed it up straight away and won again on the Saturday. 12 podium, possible podiums over the weekend. Between the two of them, they got six of those 12. So they locked out half of the f podiums for the weekend. Um, just showing lots and lots of pace. Um, you know, Brown was in the fight for the win on Sunday as well uh, before, you know, he eventually went off and whatever. Um, but yeah, just pace from them. I predicted them to fight back this year, but was not predicting, you know, they're leading the championship at the moment. Um, the, you know, they're first and fifth in the championship. Yeah, I just, I'm a little bit shocked at how well they are doing. Uh, just a great weekend for them overall. Um, quick run through the points. Uh, Brody is first on 514. Chaz is second, 32 behind. Van Gisbergen third, Jaime fourth. Will Brown in fifth. Sixth is Cam Waters somehow. Uh, Brock Feeney seventh. Reynolds eighth. Ninth is Jack LeBrock. And um, forward uh, there in 10th position. Just, yeah. Um, Gen 3 has th thrown the... Um, the playbook out a little bit, obviously Triple Eight, uh, they're probably realistically Shane's still the fastest and that, but we are seeing a little bit of mixed up. Um, now seeing the cars in person, oh, they uh, just on track, the cars look amazing. They, I think they sound even better than the previous generation of cars. The looks are undoubtedly better. Um, the racing just so much better on, you know, at Albert Park. We saw cars, you know, where one was passing one corner and then you'd fight back and, you know, you're getting that. The, the, the start of that second race on the the Friday race, um, yeah, where you just, you know, you had guys, it seemed like going from first to fourth and then the next thing they're back in the lead. Um, it probably didn't quite go like that, uh, but it just seemed like you, you could pass, you could make a mistake one corner and then fight back as someone, you know, it wasn't just a train of cars and then, you know, big separation. Passing was possible, which, I'm really excited about, a little bit worried about why these Mustangs are just, you know, spontaneously combusting. Um, but yeah, the definitely the racing a hell of a lot better. The looks a hell of a lot better. The cars sound really good. Um, yeah, some different people up the front. It has mixed up the order a bit. So at the moment, um, yeah, I, I'm giving it a thumbs up. I'm, yeah, I, I was quite excited about it coming out of the weekend. And that was with the limited amount of running, I suppose, that they got. Um, just on the, Thursday was really good being essentially a, a supercars day at the Grand Prix. Friday it felt a, a little bit shuffled behind and then uh, Saturday and Sunday I did watch from home unbelievable the crowds that were there on Friday though like I was just I was blown away the turnout um, and then obviously the crowds were bigger on Saturday and Sunday so uh, yeah just uh, thank you also to the people who came up and said hi to me um, yeah I, I, I still get a real big kick out of you know fans coming up and saying hi uh, yeah just really brought a smile to my face big thanks to Matt Stone Racing and I did get a little bit although it was very shortened um, I did get a quick walk around the Tickford pits as well um, these cars speak spectacular when you see them up close if you get a chance definitely check them out um they like the the previous cars were pretty special these are works of art um yeah the way the carbon fiber the engineering involved in them they are very spectacular probably a little bit too engineered i suppose they probably could have dialed it back a bit um but yeah just looking at them absolutely amazing um anyway down in the comments let me know what you thought of the racing over the weekend um yeah i i enjoyed it i'm very happy with where the category is going at the moment there is obviously a few little concerns uh but generally i th i think this is heading in the right direction but yeah let me know what you think till next time i'm still dave and i'll catch you later